Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review. This is a movie that we have reviewed in the past twice in October Horror Fest year 2014 and October Horror Fest 2015. And I lost both reviews. We reviewed the film Pandorum. It's a film that I've seen now three times in my lifespan, and I kind of wanted to take another look at it after not seeing it for a quite bit of time since it's been since 2015 since I sat down and watched this movie so I kind of hoped in my brain that did it age better does it hold up like it did when I saw it back in 2015 or are there some blemishes that I missed in my younger movie reviewer mind if you enjoyed this review like any other content that I've done in the past or I will in the future like, share, subscribe, join the madness, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the works. We also have a Discord, a link's right there down below. Come chat with us, let us know some of your ideas. We are a variety channel, we're up for anything. Now moving on to the numbers of Pandorum. Critics rate this film a 3 out of 10, which I don't understand how it's a 3 out of 10, but at the same time, I could kind of see why. And audiences rate this film a 4.9 out of 10, just shy of a 5 out of 10, which kind of concerns me, but at the same time, I kind of get it. The budget of this film was $33 million, and they box office back $20.6 million, so this film was an utter box office bomb. Time to get into the pros, cons, and comments section of the video. First off with the comments. Um, like I said, the first time reviewing this film since 2015. When I reviewed it back in 2014, it was my first time ever seeing it. I was very un unsure of what I was getting into. And back then we only had a five star rating. And this film got a solid five star out of five stars. Because I just really enjoyed the film and really liked it a lot. It's been several years since I've seen this film, so quite intrigued on how my thoughts will change. The commercial and promotional uh, advertising for this movie didn't really help with the box office sales or just trying to get advertising up for this movie. Kind of sucked for this movie because I remember seeing one trailer for it before it came out and then disappeared off the face of the earth. Probably because I think they spent more money on the film itself and less money on the advertising. This film is also very similar to another film called Passengers and it's also got some shades of Event Horizon in it as well. It also has some vibes of like Alien. I also didn't write it down but I also kind of gave some Dead Space vibes as well. So it's kind of a mixture of those four films put together in some weird mixing pot straight out of space hell. So now it's time to get into uh, the pros. I wanted to kind of talk about the way they expressed hypersleep in this film, which I think they covered it pretty well for the most part, and also the add-on with the uh, Pandorum, cue credits, the way that the body absorbs moisture over time and how extended hypersleep does cause amnesia. That was really important that they added that in there because that kind of gives them that plot uh, issue of trying to remember why were they there, what's going on, why were they in hypersleep for a very long time, and just the fact that they were sitting in that uh, hyper sleep chamber just for the long period of time. They were absorbing moisture in their skin, which is why their skin looked very nasty and peely looking. I remember that I was very attached to the soundtrack of this film, because I used to uh, put soundtracks of movies into the background of my reviews until I started getting more copyright marks. I used to like this, the at least the main theme of Pandorum, and I used it for a couple horror fests in the early days because it performed so well in the first two years of horror fest and it just it brings back the memories of seeing Pandorum for the very first time and watching it again for the second year in the row and just hearing that song again just brings back the the memories of seeing a movie for the first time and just going wow like why this film not get much, that much attention like it should have. Some of the uh, items and the tech that they had in the film 
uh, well, the two things that I wanted to point out, there was the, uh, the laser razor where, like, it was basically a hand-shaved razor, but instead of, like, the metal, uh, razor blades, it was just a, a laser line that just went straight down the side and made, like, a clean, like, sh shaped spot on the side of his face. And I also kind of enjoyed the, uh, I forgot they were called, they're, like, the non-lethal, like, force guns that they had, that they held in their hands like this and, like, charged it up like that, but I liked the weaponry in this film and also the weaponry that the creatures were using as well was actually pretty nice and some of that actually looked like handcraft like main, like the monsters weapons like the staffs and like the blowtorch staff that they had when it comes to creatures evolved from humans were able to make weaponry like that just kind of like how the Native Americans did back in the day with like their axes and like spears and stuff which we did cover prey last week so be sure to check that out I did kind of like uh, grazed over the like the atm the atmosphere of the movie and everything comparing it to other films I also wanted to say that I enjoyed the creepiness of the atmosphere in like an almost like run down or abandoned like spaceship which turned out to be not so abandoned but more like a, a run down like taken over like destroyed a ship with just creatures running around and running muck and just just destroying things and just killing anything that's in its sights. It gives an ambiance of like like dead space. Like you don't know what's gonna be around the corner until you're there. It gives a creepy vibe as you're watching this movie. And I remember back in 2014 that atmosphere did so well for the younger brain of me. It embraces you in the Elysium spaceship about what's going on around you and what's going to happen next or what happened previously like it all blended very well together the atmosphere of the film was fantastic so this next part of book is mainly going to be talking about like the quick little banter between Peyton and Bauer in the very beginning of the film but I really did enjoy like the small talk and the banter and like Peyton trying to calm down Bauer to like, kind of like make him laugh and like make him like take it easy for a minute as he's starting to panic in the tunnels and everything I really enjoyed that part in the beginning but it slowly um, kind of died off because Peyton started dealing with his own issues while Bauer and his uh, group of survivors are dealing with the creatures. But then when they get back together, it's like that dialogue comes back again and it like it works for these two and these two really bounce off each other very well and it just it made the scenes with uh, Bauer and Peyton at the same time more like attention grabbing it made it more entertaining to watch it was more interesting just to hear the dialogue between those those two characters just anything with uh, Peyton Bauer or Gallo or like just anything with those characters in the movie would made it more entertaining to watch I really did enjoy how the creatures looked they kind of looked very basic but at the same time they had their own unique look like, it's something you could possibly see in another sci-fi horror film, but it's not like your typical average alien-looking creature at the same time, if that makes any lick of sense. Because these creatures are basically humans that were given a medication and they evolved over a period of time which created these cannibalistic native-like monsters and how that they're intelligent of creating traps in their own weapons and like showing like who is the leader and everything that's what makes them very interesting and at the very end I kind of mentioned it earlier with the subconscious of Gallo and Peyton the plot twist at the end way the way they handled the plot twist I wish they would have done it a little bit better because they kind of teased it in the middle of the film ish and then they full-on revealed it at the very end like it was handled very weirdly but it was okay enough for the common movie uh, viewer to go oh shit holy crap I would have handled it a little bit better maybe filmed it differently and like put some scenes in different spots or like filmed it in a different direction but it was plausible enough to be still entertaining for fans to see and I still enjoyed the bad part is, is that I have gotten a lot more cons over time. Uh, con number one would have to be the pacing of this movie. It feels rushed at some points, but it also feels like it was 
chopped up on the ed editing room floor and then glued back together in some places. This film is a very short film, it feels like. It's only like an hour and a half, but it feels like it's only an hour long. I feel like they crammed too much into the short time span that they had, and if they would have had a longer time slot, but say like maybe two hours, I think they would have been able to put together a better cohesive, fluent story, but just with how it is now, could be a reason why it kind of hurts the film. I'm just gonna flat out say it, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people didn't go watch this film because they were very confused by the poster. And then for those who went in and saw the movie, they probably weren't getting what they thought the poster was portraying. The poster is kind of misleading is basically what I'm trying to say. And like, I like the poster. It looks nice. It looks creepy. But maybe it also, it also could make sense because like one of the main plot points of Pandorum is the mental illness that they get over time called Pandorum, which makes them start to hallucinate, makes them start to go crazy, makes them start to think that what they're doing is wrong. Basically create their new madness and everything and it's basically like a driving mad syndrome of some sorts that happens while you're trapped in space for a long period of time so that's what they could have been betraying but I think a lot of people missed the mark on that one going back to the pacing I started noticing about halfway through the film that I was recognizing how this film was being put together how it was pieced together how things went about in the film it started looking very familiar it felt very Resident evil -y, and I waited until the credits to see if the name popped up, which the one of the producers of this film was Paul W.S. Anderson, the director of pretty much all of the Resident Evil films, or the producer of all the Resident Evil films. I, I did not like how all the Resident Evil films were shot, filmed, and edited together. I had an issue with the pacing, and it felt like a Paul, Paul W.S. Anderson film, and this is mainly why, because it is a Paul W.S. Anderson film. Bauer's side plot, like him with his girlfriend or wife or whatever, it kind of gave him more character depth, but enough to go, oh, he had a girlfriend or a wife. Oh, you think that she's dead on the ship. Oh, wait, she left him before he went on the ship. Kind of felt pointless, but I guess it was also used to help him as he regained his memory over time. The fighting sound effects and the sound design for some of these scenes were atrocious. <laughs> like, a lot of it was like free to download basic sound effects that you can get off of any website and you slap it on a movie like every other YouTube film that I've seen or have tried to make. <laughs> as much as I talked about the creatures and everything and the creature design, the origin of the creatures, which I briefed over in the pro section, was kind of left up in the air until we got to a conversation between the girl and Bauer while they're getting food from creepy uh, gremlin looking dude. It was kind of glanced over in a conversation right there and it's kind of one of those if you're not paying attention you're going to miss that part of the film and then you're not gonna know where these creatures came from, or what made them, or what caused humans to turn into these things. I kind of wish that it was done more graphically, like they would have shown more of a visual effect on how all this stuff happened instead of just in brief context. Rushed character progression, meaning like in a situation like this, I feel like the three characters surviving in the ship from the creatures, they kind of got along together very rather quick. That also could play a hand with the pacing of the film. Oh yeah, Norma Reedus in this movie for like 10 minutes. Not even that, 5 minutes. And then 47 minutes. Like, they've been awake for like 6 hours. And then it, from that point on to the point of them waking up upside down in the cannibal dude's like lair. It suddenly became like an hour for the reactor to explode. And then about three minutes later it's about nine minutes left and then about five minutes later it's like five seconds there's a lot being jumped through 
in this film and kind of being cut out that I wish that was in. And again, the pacing, the main issue with this film, I would say have to be the pacing. That's that's like a huge issue with a lot of the cons on this list is just the pacing is so awful and the editing is so choppy and just the way the film was put together in like less than an hour and a half. It works for a sci-fi TV show, but it doesn't work for a full feature length film. It is now time to get into my rating of this film. I did nitpick a lot of stuff in this film, but I also praised a lot of stuff about this movie, and I also did some research to help me kind of fix my confusion of what's going on, because there was, there was a point in the film where I started to think that the monsters weren't real, but then they were real in the end after Bauer Peyton, slash Peyton, but they were there at the end after Bauer slash Peyton was kind of flooded out and drowned in the water. So I had to do some research about the creatures, and they're actually other survivors that got off the ship, got the medication from all that stuff, and it turned them, involved them into these cannibalistic monsters, and everything. I'm dropping everything. Just like my brain. All in all, I feel like it was definitely a good idea for me to put this movie back on the shelf for seven years, because this is definitely... This definitely would have been a film that if I were to watch every year, once a year, I probably would have gotten very tired of it, and I probably would have started hating it. But, since there's a seven year gap in between the last time I watched it, and this time of me watching it, I can still appreciate the things that I like about this film back then, and the ad stuff I like now. But I can also see more glaring issues that I may have missed the first two times watching it. But in the end, I still enjoy this film for what it is. I wish there was more to it. Like, again, I've beaten this like this issue like a dead horse. Pacing, pacing, pacing. Don't let Paul W.S. Anderson direct another sci-fi film that I like. <laughs> I had a trouble picking a rating because initially I did I wanted to go with a six and a half, but then I changed it to a six point seven. And then I kind of settled with like a 7 out of 10. It's kind of, it's definitely nowhere near the ratings of like the critics and the audience scores on Rotten Tomatoes. I feel like this film gets a more of a bad rep than it should because there's a lot more to unravel about this movie than you think there is. You just have to really, really try hard to look past of the bad pacing and piece together the story they're trying to tell. And the story that they're trying to tell is actually very excellent. It's just delivered poorly. So that is why I'm giving it a 7 out of 10 because of the poor execution of the film itself, but the excellent story that they tried to portray was just enough to hold it at 7 for me. If you've enjoyed this review and any content that I've done before, and that's coming up in the future, be sure to like, share, subscribe, join the madness, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the works. There's a Discord link down below in the, dis in the uh, description box. Please go click on that, follow us, chat with us, share your thoughts, give us some ideas to do for stuff, so I'm not just sitting here stuck doing movie reviews, because I do come up with ideas every now and then, but I'm mainly doing movie reviews. This is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check movie review, and I'm signing out. <laughs>